Who was General Abner Doubleday? Abner Doubleday was a career United States Army officer and Union Major General in the American Civil War. He fired the first shot in defense of Fort Sumter, the opening battle of the war, and had a pivotal role in the early fighting at the Battle of Gettysburg. Gettysburg was his finest hour, but his relief by Major General George G. Meade caused lasting hostile feelings between the two men. In San Francisco, after the war, he obtained a patent on the cable car railway. In 1908, 15 years after his death, Doubleday was declared by the Mills Commission to have invented the game of baseball, a claim never made by Doubleday during his lifetime. This claim has been thoroughly debunked by baseball historians. Doubleday, the son of Ulysses F. Doubleday and Hester Donnelly, was born in New York. As a child, Abner was very short. The family all slept in the attic loft of the one-room house. His perennial grandfather, also named Abner, had fought in the American Revolutionary War. His maternal grandfather, Thomas Donnelly, joined the Army at 14 and was a mounted messenger for George Washington. His great-grandfather, Peter Donnelly, was a Minuteman. His father, Ulysses F., fought in the War of 1812, published newspapers and books, and represented Auburn, New York, for four years in the United States Congress. Abner spent his childhood in Auburn and later was sent to Cooperstown to live with his uncle and attend a private preparatory high school. He practiced as a surveyor and civil engineer for two years before entering the United States Military Academy in 1838. He graduated 1842, 24th in a class of 56 cadets, and was commissioned a brevet second lieutenant in the 3rd U.S. Artillery. In 1852, he married Mary Hewitt of Baltimore, the daughter of a local lawyer. Doubleday initially served in coastal garrisons and then in the Mexican-American War from 1846 to 1848 and the Seminole Wars from 1856 to 1858. In 1858 he was transferred to Fort Moultrie in Charleston Harbor serving under Colonel John L. Gardner. By the start of the Civil War, he was a captain and second in command in the garrison at Fort Sumter under Major Robert Anderson. He aimed the cannon that fired the first return shot in answer to the Confederate bombardment on April 12th 1861. He subsequently referred to himself as the Hero of Sumter. Doubleday was promoted to Major on May 14, 1861, and commanded the Artillery Department in the Shenandoah Valley from June to August, and then the Artillery for Major General Nathaniel Banks' division of the Army of the Potomac. He was appointed Brigadier General of Volunteers on February 3, 1862, and was assigned to duty in Northern Virginia while the Army of the Potomac 
conducted the Peninsula Campaign. His first combat assignment was to lead the 2nd Brigade, 1st Division, 3rd Corps of the Army of Virginia during the Northern Virginia Campaign. In the actions at Bronner's Farm, just before the Second Battle of Bull Run, he took the initiative to send two of his regiments to reinforce Brigadier General John Gibson's brigade against a large Confederate force fighting it to a standstill. Personal initiative was required since his division commander, Brigadier General Rufus King, was incapacitated by an epileptic seizure at the time. He was replaced by Brigadier General John P. Hatch. His men were routed when they encountered Major General James Longstreet's Corps, but by the following day, August 30, he took command of the division when Hatch was wounded and he led his men to cover the retreat of the Union Army. Doubleday again led the division, now assigned to the 1st Corps of the Army of the Potomac after South Mountain, where Hatch was wounded again. At Antietam, he led his men into the deadly fighting in the cornfield and the West Woods, and one colonel described him as a gallant officer, remarkably cool, and at the very front of battle. He was wounded when an artillery shell exploded near his horse, throwing him to the ground in a violent fall. He received a brevet promotion to lieutenant colonel in the regular army for his actions at Antietam and was promoted in March 1863 to Major General of Volunteers to rank from November 29, 1862. At Fredericksburg in December 1862, his division mostly sat idle. During the winter, the First Corps was recognized and Doubleday assumed command of the 3rd Division. At Chancellorsville in May 1863, the division was kept in reserve. At the start of the Battle of Gettysburg, July 1, 1863, Doubleday's division was the 2nd Infantry Division on the field to reinforce the Cavalry Division of Brigadier General John Buford. When his Corps Commander, Major General John F. Reynolds, was killed very early in the fighting, Doubleday found himself in command of the Corps at 10.50 a.m. His men fought well in the morning, putting up a stout resistance but as overwhelming Confederate forces massed against them, their line eventually broke and they retreated back through the town of Gettysburg to the relative safety of Cemetery Hill south of town. It was Doubleday's finest performance during the war, leading 9,500 men against 10 Confederate brigades that numbered more than 16,000. Seven of those brigades sustained casualties that ranged from 35 to 50 percent, indicating the ferocity of the Union defense. On Cemetery Hill, however, the First Corps could muster only a third of its men as effective for duty 
and the Corps was essentially destroyed as a combat force for the rest of the battle. It would be dis it would be decommissioned in March 1864. Its surviving units consolidated into other corps. On July 2, 1863, Army of the Potomac Commander Major General George G. Meade replaced Doubleday with Major General John Newton, a more junior officer from another corps. The reason was a false report by 11th Corps Commander Major General Oliver O. Howard that Doubleday's Corps broke first, causing the entire Union line to collapse, but Meade also had a long history of disdain for Doubleday's combat effectiveness dating back to South Mountain. Doubleday was humiliated by this snub and held a lasting grudge against Meade, but he returned to division command and fought well for the remainder of the battle. He was wounded in the neck on the second day of Gettysburg and received a brevet promotion to colonel in the regular army for his service. He formally requested reinstatement as First Corps commander, but Meade refused and Doubleday left Gettysburg on July 7th for Washington. Doubleday's indecision as a commander in the war resulted in his uncomplimentary nickname, 48 Hours. Doubleday assumed administrative duties in the defense of Washington, D.C., where he was in charge of courts martial, which gave him legal experience that he used after the war. His only return to combat was directing a portion of the defense against the attack by Confederate Lieutenant General Jabal A. Early in the Valley Campaign of 1864. Also, while in Washington, Doubleday testified against George Meade at the United States Congress Joint Committee on the Conduct of the War, criticizing him harshly over his conduct of the Battle of Gettysburg. While in Washington, Doubleday remained a loyal Republican and staunch supporter of President Abraham Lincoln. Doubleday rode with Lincoln on the train to Gettysburg for the Gettysburg Address, and Colonel and Mrs. Doubleday attended events with Mr. and Mrs. Lincoln in Washington. After the Civil War, Doubleday mustered out of the volunteer service on August 24, 1865, reverted to the rank of lieutenant colonel, and became the colonel of the 35th U.S. Infantry in September 1867. He was stationed in San Francisco from 1869 through 1871, and he took out a patent for the cable car railway. In 1871, he commanded the 24th U.S. Infantry and all African American regiment. In the 1870s, he was listed in the New York Business Directory as a lawyer. Doubleday died of heart disease in 1893. Doubleday's body was laid in state in New York City Hall and then was taken to Washington by train. He is buried in Arlington National Cemetery in Arlington, Virginia.